everybody, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, the Whistler Film Festival is on, and there are some great movies. Yeah, and you have an opportunity to see this one before it opens in theaters in March 2011. It is called Good Neighbors, and we are very happy to be joined by filmmaker Jacob Tierney. How Hi, are Jacob. you? Good. How are nice you? To see you, man. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks We've heard a me. lot about you because uh, we were interviewing Jay Baruchel and, and a couple other folks from uh, the Trotsky before. Yeah. And I got to say, man, they were all blowing a little bit of sunshine uh, your way, which is probably best I wasn't here then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It would have been embarrassing. Now, for those who did see the Trotsky, of course, Jay Baruchel was in it. Uh, maybe you can take it from there and tell us about Good Neighbors, the rest Very of the different. cast, and about the movie. Yeah. Well, Good Neighbors. We made Good Neighbors the following year. We just made it this winter, and. Um, yeah, it's, it stars Jay Baruchel and Scott Speedman and a bunch of the other actors from uh, Trotsky, among them Emily Hampshire and, and Mary Kedzia and Dio Horn. And uh, it's basically, uh, it's a pretty different film, but it's a, a kind of a murder mystery, a noir yeah. set during very the... Very noir. Very yeah. noir, very noir, uh, set during the uh, the referendum in Montreal in 1995. And it's basically about a bunch of neighbors in an apartment complex who... And it's got that, uh, I mean, the element of noir to it is, is that underlying comedy. Uh, yeah. You know, which... which isn't supposed to be funny, and yet it yeah. is. Well, I mean, when I when I said it, I, it's, a, it's my favorite genre of movie, noir. And noirs all used to be really funny until they stopped being funny in about the 80s and 90s, and they became thrillers. Like <laughs> yeah, a lot creepy, of things stopped thrillers. being funny yeah. in the 80s yeah. and 90s. <laughs> but among them, like, sex and murder, and I still think that stuff can be funny. And so, yes, there's there's a lot of black humor in Now, uh, I have neighbors. to ask where you came up with this concept. And we're it's not based gonna... on a book. Based so, on... It's based on a book, so right away I like to it's make that from very clear. <laughs> Well, if you read the book and then saw my movie, you'd know that I do You're most of the gross things in it, right. not, <laughs> not the book. But nevertheless, the premise is all is all based on a very good novel called Chavoisine by a Quebecois writer named Christine Bruyette. Well, and there's that beautiful element, uh, I think, that, that always makes film so compelling. When you see people and you can you can see how they get themselves into these situations, yeah. and and you can. Uh, you know, you can, you understand that. You, you know, you you can see how that could happen. To yeah. Well, part part of the thing that appealed to me about the book and the uh, just the whole notion of it for a movie was that it's not really about finding out who did it so much as finding out how people are going to get out of what they've done. <laughs> because there's no real surprise as to yeah. But there's no real surprise. The surprise isn't oh, it's that person doing that. It's like okay, and and now what? You know, right, and, and yeah, now yeah. what is kind of the, the premise of that And we're intentionally film. not giving away a lot. Because yeah, I know it's hard to talk about the movie film. for me was that I actually didn't read the book mm. and I didn't know what was going to happen. Surprises and it, it was just the surprises yeah. for me, exactly. Great. Great. Uh, maybe you can set up the clip that we're going to look at right now. Yeah, the clip we're going to see is from the very beginning of the film when uh, Jay Baruchel's character, uh, Victor, he moves into the building at the beginning of the story and meets Spencer and Louise, who are two neighbors who are friendly. Uh, with each other, uh, and maybe not anybody else in particular, but who seem to get along with one another. And and yeah, Jay's just moved back from China, and so that's the clip. Okay, we're about here's to see. a scene from Good Neighbors. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, bonjour. Hey. Uh, you speak hey. English? Yeah. Hi. It's yesterday's, but there's nothing about the killer. Did you do the crossword? Do I ever? Hey. Hi. I, I, I'm moving in upstairs, apartment number 12. Oh, thank God. I thought you were delivering pillows. <laughs> that would be a weird job. It's so cool that you guys are both English. Uh, sorry, I'm rude. Uh, I'm Victor. Nice to meet you. Spencer. Uh, Louise. Nice, nice to meet you. OK, bye. And there she goes. Yeah. Well, best of luck with the move there, man. I'd offer to give you a hand, but I'm lazy. No, what? No, no, no. I have a brother coming in from Ottawa. I was kidding, Vince. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awkward. Uh, the one thing that, uh, well, there's so many things I appreciate about this, but I, I mean, you mentioned when it was set uh, on the eve of the referendum yeah. uh, in Quebec in 95, but throughout the whole film, there's this real sense of isolation. Uh, you know, them as English speaking in, in the area of Montreal, uh, the three of them together and them alone. Like, yeah. it's sort of pervasive. You don't see a lot of other people in this film. No, there's not a lot of people in the movie. You, know, you don't see a lot of places either. It really does take place in that building. And we try, you know, that finding that building and casting that building was a huge part of telling the story properly, I felt, because so much of it was going to be about these hallways and these stairs and these apartments on top and of each other, the fire escapes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, uh, Jay Baruchel was in the Trotsky. Uh, 
the Trotsky took place in NDG, so did this. Uh, you guys grew up together. Takes place in the West End. Yeah, it doesn't really take, Trotsky didn't really take place in NDG, but people think it did, which is fine. They're all, they're all <laughs> allowed. <laughs> they're allowed. It's not, not the fine, people Jacob. in Montreal are territorial, <laughs> but. but. No, you know, what's, what's ironic is that we shot all over Montreal, and I think we only shot in NDG like one day, but everyone, everyone thinks we shot the entire movie on their street, at any rate. People who I meet are like, well, you so shot that right? on my street. And I'm like, oh, but this one very right. much does, and it's an yes, interesting it neighborhood yeah. uh, in Montreal as yeah. well, for people that aren't familiar with it. Yeah. And why set it there? Was the book set there, or was this a No, the book is actually set in Quebec City in the early 80s, and I moved it, I, I kind of retransposed it into, uh, uh, part of the reason was because I wanted the threat of this serial killer to be really particular to a neighborhood, and not to a city. Montreal's a big city, and so if there's a serial killer, if you don't live in that neighborhood, it's no big deal. you're gonna kind of not yeah. pay too much attention to it. And so I wanted to really localize it, and that was part of the reason. And the reason I said it during the referendum is because that's when I first read the book. When did you make the transition between uh, uh, acting and, and sort of filmmaking, and, and what led to that for you? Is it just a, a desire to do things your own way, or? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I'd been acting since I was a very little kid, since I was five, six years old I started. and. Um, you know, at a certain point, when you when you do it that much, um, you you figure out who the storyteller is, like who the person. You know, when you're acting in a film, you're basically you're signing up to become a part of somebody's vision, yeah. um, which is great and really fun. But if you want to have the vision yourself and you want to tell the story, it, it's very it's easy to figure out whose job that is. And it must <laughs> yeah. be great for you as a director to have an acting background to understand the way actors think, so that you can get what you want from people. I think I don't think it hurts. That's for sure. I think the thing that helps the most is that. I've been on so many sets and I've worked with so many other directors. I, I know the difference between a, a well-run set and a poorly run set. And I'll tell you the truth, I've never seen a good movie come out of a poorly run set. Yeah. It's still a labor environment. It still needs to function. You know, yeah. it, still needs right. to, it really does. And people, you know, you get your best work out of people by treating them a certain way, yeah. uh, I think, you know, by, by treating them well. Like, as opposed Jay to said he yelled a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm a screamer. Yeah, I'm a screamer. Yeah, you're a jerk. Real, uh -huh. real jerk. I'm a dictator. <laughs> I'm a screamer. Jay only tells the truth, by the but, way. But, uh, you know, the other thing I would think is, is you know, you do have a different insight into the performances that you can get out of people. So yeah. you know the kind of actor that you need yeah. uh, for a particular I'm very role. particular about my taste in actors, that's for sure. I yeah. don't, uh, I, I, there are actors I like a lot and actors that I, uh, that, just whose styles, I think you're exactly Right, I know will will fit Suit the, the material that, yeah. I, that I'm that I'm creating. But with this film, because it all happened so quickly and came together so quickly, I wrote those three parts, actually the four main parts uh, for those four actors. And so I was thrilled. They're all people I know and know quite well. So nice when they all great say cast. yes, right? Great. Well, I asked great them before. Film. I asked them before. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Make sure you're not writing a movie for you. Gonna do it. Well, congrats, <laughs> on If you want to see Good Neighbors, it is part of the it Whistler awesome. Film Festival. It will be screening tomorrow night at 9:30 in Whistler. You can go to the website to find the info and to get tickets. And you'll be doing a Q and A after the screening. Yeah. And as I like to say, if you've seen the Trotsky, don't bring your kids. No, yeah, it's no, not no, no, the same. Different movie. No, not the same gig. But one different of the greatest movie. things about this movie is you will laugh during a murder scene, and that is a rare, rare feat to pull yeah. off in filmmaking. So Thanks thank again. you very much, man. It was a pleasure. We're going to take a, a break. Lot.